Alright guys, how's it going? So I thought today we would take a little bit more of an in-depth look at the cloth brush for Blender. Now one thing I'll start the conversation with is, this is an experimental build. So it may not work 100%, in fact the developer just tweeted an hour ago and he's actually made changes already, so this is evolving all the time and we need to thank the developer as well because he didn't need to release a build, but it's garnered so much attention and traction that everybody in the 3D industry is talking about it, <laughs> and that's a good thing. So in order to actually download the build, you need to go to blender.community slash graphical, and you can see that there's two separate builds. We now have a Mac build, which was released five hours ago from recording, and we also have the Win64 build. So depending on what OS you're working on, download what you need. And keep in mind, this is a separate build of Blender, so it's like basically starting all over again. And let's quickly jump into Blender. Now in traditional fashion, I'll delete the cube, I'll press Shift and A and we'll add in a plane. I'll then add in a subdivision modifier, and let's make it 6 in the viewport. And let's keep it simple. And we'll hit apply, and just to show you the wireframe, I'll press Z and we'll go into wireframe mode. Now this mesh, not that dense. So some of the sculpting might be a little bit jagged, but we'll check that out in a minute. In fact, when I speak to Houdini guys, they suggest you should always triple the mesh, especially when you're doing things like cloth, but we'll leave it in polygons at the moment. And one thing you'll notice, this doesn't have an icon yet. It's so fresh, it doesn't even have an icon. So if you come down to none on the left hand side, select cloth, it'll bring up the cloth brush. Now let me take symmetry off, so we're not working in symmetry. And we'll go over some of the basic options. Now the great thing about this is, it pretty much emulates any other brush. So we have the radius of the brush, and we also have an icon here. Enable tablet pressure sensitivity. So if you use a tablet, brilliant. But we'll leave this one checked, which is, use unified radius. Now we have radius units, and this kind of goes globally for sculpting tools. So in view, check out the brush size. Notice how it kind of stays the exact same size, no matter how much I zoom in and out. Now if I change this to scene, it will actually be scene dependent. Notice my brush size scaling. So keep that in the back of your mind. I'll leave it on scene and I'll put the radius up to 0.5 meters, technically half. We also have strength. Now this value can actually go above one, so you can make this anything you want. In fact, let's make it three. Now normal radius, is the ratio between the brush radius and the radius that is going to be used to sample the normal. Now I'll leave this on default, it seems to be pretty good. And auto smoothing, you can maybe crank this up just a little bit. Now simulation limit, factor added relative to the radius to limit the cloth simulation facts. And you also have a simulation fall off and that's a fall off in terms of the brush. In terms of deformation we have a few different options. We have drag, push, now, one thing I'll say, push does not work for me. It might be user error, and it might just be a simple bug. Pinch point, that kind of pinches the mesh. You have pinch perpendicular, inflate, and grab. So very basic options, to be honest. And you also have cloth mass. Now, the lower the mass, the more it acts like a sulk. It kind of becomes lighter. The higher the mass, kind of starts to act like wool, or maybe even steel. So I'm going to drop the mass. And let's try out the drag function. I'm actually going to add shade smoothing. I'll jump into sculpting again. Now keep in mind, I don't have a heavy mesh, but this is pretty working pretty damn nice. And we can drag the mesh any direction we want. And you can see it actually working in terms of... And you can see it working in terms of adding wrinkles. So essentially what it's doing is kind of like a cloth simulation over the brush. And this is superb. Now one great thing about this is, masks actually work as well. So I'm going to quickly mask off something, so... This is like, somebody sleeping in a bed. Now excuse the poor drawing. <laughs> now this is a horrible mask, but it's just to give you an example that cloth actually respects a mask. So we'll drop the cloth mask down again. We'll use drag and check this out. How cool is that? Now don't worry about these tries or the bad topology, I can always fix that very easily. 
and I'm actually going to invert the mask this time, I'll press control and I, so we've now inverted and I'm going to change this to inflate, um, I'll put the radius up ever so slightly, check this out, control M to take the mask off and we get something like this, and this is basically the cloth brush, very basic options, you can treat it like any other brush when it comes to Blender, so you can add a texture, you can do stroke fall off, etc. It pretty much integrates perfectly with Blender. Now one thing I will say is, push doesn't work for me, it just goes all directions. The pinch, pinch is perfect, it kind of pinches the mesh, does something like this. This is brilliant if you want to do like folds and jeans or something like this. I'll quickly jump into layout. I'll add on a subdivision surface to make it a little bit smoother, and check that out. Superb! Thank you to the developer, this is why Blender's such an attraction to users. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, I've got a couple of mates, you know what to do.